DAISY 2020 for our next session talking about managing failing and thrombosed dialysis access. Now I would like to introduce you to chair, Akira, Dr. Akira Miyata from Japan and Dr. Chen Weihua from Taiwan. As for commentators, Dr. Yang Shenzi from Taiwan, Dr. Ngo Ching Liu from Malaysia, Dr. Wong Shi Xian from Taiwan, and Dr. Soracha Rukapano from Thailand. And at last, Dr. Ye Hong from China. Yeah, uh, welcome to the last section. Uh, I think that this last section, uh, Dr. Akira Miyata and me, Dr. Jimmy Tan, we are going to post uh, this section. This section, we are going to talk about how to manage the uh, arterial uh, graft uh, complication and also thrombosis. So I think uh, we have a lot of uh, panelists with us uh, today, uh, Dr. N.C. Liu from Malaysia and Dr. Hawakuchi uh, from Japan. Yeah, and we have Dr. Ye Hong from China. Yeah, and we also have uh, Jackie from Singapore. Yeah, and we also have uh, Dr. Wen Shixian from Taiwan. And finally, uh, Dr. Liu Yangdong from China. I think uh, first we proceed to the first talk. I think the first talk is uh, going to present by uh, Dr. Arakuji. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, this ultrasound guided intervention for the uh, AVG dysfunction. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Harakuji, please start uh, your talk. Uh, ultrasound guided PTA. I'm here, Harakuji from Halakuchi Vasca Clinic. The background, in the recent years, the PTA for vascular access has been dramatically spread. We had advanced in ultrasound devices and technology, risk of extra exposure, risk for the patients with residual kidney function, risk of side effects of the contrast Atasan guided PTA in a clinic. We started PTA under Atasan from August 2008. PTA is performed without fluoroscopy. PTA is performed using fluoroscopy in the central vein. Currently, more than 95% of the patients undergo PTA under Atasan guided. Ultrasound guide PT is also useful for the possible with a linear probe we use uh, this right side of the linear probe which is a 12 megahertz preparation preparation of the ultrasound guide PTA and we use the sterile jelly in the Echo jelly tray. Um, this is a probe cover and rubber band. And this is a CM cover. This is a cover over the ultrasound device. This is a position of the operator, assistant, and ultrasound device. Here the patient, here operator, assistant, and ultrasound like this. The assistant holds the probe and I, I use a guide wire and balloon. Nowadays I hold the probe and, and the guide wire. Then the assistant holds the end of the balloon catheter. The series of the sound guided PTA. Before PTA, we check the uh, stenosis. Here stenosis, then uh, here a stenotic site, lung segment stenotic site here. After insertion of the cyst, Introducer, 
we pass the guide wire like this and the guide wire go through Passing of guide wire technique. Sometimes the Venus valve, yeah, it is, it is difficult to pass the guide wire through the valve. Then it is easy to uh, guide wire passage using other sound. This is a new rhythm. Then it sometimes is difficult to pass the uh, pass through the new rhythm, but we can see the vessel so it is easy to pass the guide wire sometimes Currently, we are on the video, but unfortunately, the, uh, the sound of the video was not available right now. So we can just sit back and relax, enjoy the uh, video. The guide flips and passes, passes through the osmosis. And the, if the anosmotic angle is steep like this, it is difficult to guide the wire uh, into the proximal side of the radial artery. Then the, we do like this, then uh, go uh, past the guide wire into the proximal of the radial artery. The sending plantation. We do the same sentin plasensio using uh, under the ultrasound. Assistant, hold the probe. Don't move the, uh, don't move. Then I implant the uh, stent like this. It is a proper, proper side of the stent. Techniques for local anesthesia. Nowadays, we do the anesthesia on uh, the rear side of the vein. This is the guide wire. Then the in the front of the vessel. So the total total uh, around. Vessel around the vessels. It's a long needle, and then the, this is a anesthesia via of the vein and in front of the vein. Vessel rupture. Sometimes vessel rupture. Um, This is a rupture point. Then uh, after we can see the deflation of the balloon, the rupture point, then we immediately uh, balloon inflation and stop the rupture. And after rupture, we do we uh, inflate the balloon like this? But sometimes the point is uh, not a good point. Good point of the uh, balloon. So 
that we can see the rupture point, then the um, move the bottle at the proper side, and then we, there are no rupture here. Um, pre PTA, post PTA, then this case is a very long segment of uh, stenosis here and stenosis here. The all stenotic region dilated after PTA. Outflow out vein of the graft is a long segment of the uh, stenotic site outflow of the graft. This is a pre-PTA pre and this is a, a after PTA. There are the almost all side of the uh, stenotic site dilated. Uh, instant stenosis, and we can see the instant stenosis like this. After P PTA, there are no stenotic site. Um, Colic total obstruction case. Um, this is uh, obstruction here, then the uh, shunt, shunt flow goes to the collateral. So the, in this CTO case, the ultrasound guided PT is very effective. So we can see the vessel like this. So the, we check the guide wire uh, into the true lumen of the vessel. Then uh, we dilate the balloon like this. So it's a very easy. So the advantage of ultrasound guided PTA, we can observe changes in inside outside blood vessels. Confirm that the guided wire pass through the true lumen. Bleeding from ruptured blood vessels can be confirmed in real time. Disadvantage of ultrasound guided PTA difficult to grasp the whole picture of the vein, we can perform for central venous stenosis. It is difficult to vi visualize inside blood vessels in thoracic grafts or calcified regions. Thank you. Uh, oh, please, uh, we invite Dr. Tem uh, for the further discussion. Dr. Ten, please. Dr. Chen Wei Hua Yishi. Oh, okay, apologies, hey. sorry. It's okay. Um, uh, I thank you for your um, uh, very interesting uh, talk. And uh, I, I think I just raised one question before we move to uh, the next uh, talk. Uh, I saw you uh, do deploy the stand under ultrasound guided. So uh, I think that they should measure the length of the stand using the balloon, or actually we can measure the length of stand just by ultrasound alone. Uh, can I have the Dr. Harakuchi for the question? Uh, Dr. Please, uh, Hirokuchi, please. So your question, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Your question is uh, the what and um, how how do do I uh, stand stand in, in the in the proper point in the in the length of the stand? Yep. Now, oh, okay. It is uh, um, sometimes uh, difficult to uh, visualize the whole holes or vessel uh, in, in the uh, other sound because the other sound probe is about uh, three centimeter. So the, but, but we used to um, uh, move the probe so that we check the, uh, the point of the stent 
and the mark in the on uh, the patient patient in the patient so that we check the length of the uh synotic point so that we use a proper uh stent uh, for that length if the um the length of the stenotic point is about three centimeters we use a on um, the six centimeter um, uh, stand. So the, it is not so difficult to uh, do the stand implantation um, uh, using other sound. Sometimes it, it is easier than the, uh, the uh, fluoroscopy. So the, we can see the, the point of the stand uh, stand the real time um, the, in the best we can see the vessel. So the uh, if you use the uh, fluoroscopy, the we um, sometimes the point is uh, the is different from the when I, I guess. But uh, we use uh, at the sound is the I, I can uh, stand to the proper point of, of the proper point. So it is not so uh, difficult. Is this OK? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I get the point. Because uh, under this uh, ultrasound, we can look very properly uh, the um, exact, exact condition of the uh, place that we need to stand. Yeah, thank you for the, uh, for the answers. Uh, Dr. Akira Miyata, do you have any question or uh, any question for other panelists? Dr. Miyaka, please, do you have any questions regarding the uh, talk just given by Harukuchi? Oh, yes. I, uh, actually, I, I, have, uh, I'll, I have already learned a lot from the Dr. Haraguchi, so that <laughs> I have uh, not so much questions. But uh, um, uh, in this procedure, the assistants have has to have a very uh, big role in an, in during the uh, treatment. So, uh, do you, Dr. Haraguchi, do you have any opinion or suggestion for us if we are going to start? Uh, the uh, uh, PTA under uh, echogram. Thank you very much. Um, the, the most most point of the uh, ultrasound guide PTA is the technique of the ultrasound. So the, it, sometimes it's difficult to uh, detect the uh, anastomotic point. Uh, so it is, uh, we have to to the have of the uh, good technique for before we use the other sound guided PTA, we have to do the many for many cases uh, we do the other sound examination for many patients. So the um, the uh, first first um, so the uh, pr probe probe position. And first probe position is very um, important. So the now I pro I hold uh, the probe in, in the left hand, and I use the guide wire. Then I um, uh, use a probe and guide wire, and uh, and it is some. It is I have to. Um, it is difficult, sometimes it's difficult, but uh, we get used to do um, that technique. So that when you use uh, about uh, um, 50, 50 cases, and so it is easier to do this technique. Mm. Uh, in, this, uh, in Japanese clinics, you know, which is uh, performing a PTA under uh, Uto sound, Mm -hmm. um, there are two types. Uh, one, one is uh, uh, one is uh, just just like Dr. Haraguchi is doing. Uh, the operator hold uh, the, a probe and then a, a guide wire. And another type is uh, the 
um, assistant uh, or uh, the probe of the echo uh, Uto sound. And uh, in that case, uh, uh, which do you, uh, I know that uh, Dr. Haraguchi, you, you prefer uh, using the probe by yourself, but uh, mm. uh, what is the difference be between those two types of mm. the procedures? It depends on the assistant technique. If the assistant mm -hmm. technique is very good, it's uh, on the, uh, the assistant hole, the pro, mm -hmm. but sometimes the uh, assistant technique is so good. So the, it is easier, for me, it is easier to uh, you hold uh, the pro in the right left hand, then the, it is uh, so the small change of the probe is easier for me to in, in my brain mm -hmm. and uh, uh, like a, like a so called uh, bicycle so the brain and the hand is uh, mm -hmm. connected so the and it is easier for me to the, um, you, uh, use the probe for myself thank you very much uh, thank you very much for Hawakuchi's uh, excellent answer. Now we are moving on to the next section given by Da Wei Su from Taiwan. He's going to share his experience about angel jet with AVSS thrombosis. Let's welcome Su Da Wei Shi. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Su from Taiwan. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to give you a talk about the AVSS thrombosis treated with angel jet. Excess occlusion is a, a common complication, and this figure shows the primary assistant patency uh, at one year is around 50% for uh, prosthetic graft, and for 40% for the native fistula. So in average, nearly 50% of the excess will occluded within one year. So what is the principle to treat from both the AV excess? I think uh, there are two major principles. The first is to remove the thrombus completely, and the second is to treat the lesion. So when we talk about uh, to remove the thrombus, there are several methods. For example, uh, we have the traditional open surgical thrombectomy, and also we have the least invasive endovascular catheter-directed thrombolysis, and also we have the pharmaco-mechanical thrombectomy. When we remove more, more of the, much of the thrombus, and we need to find the lesion and treat them. So we have a traditional open surgical repair, or we can use the endovascular device such as a balloon or stent. So this figure explains how the open thrombectomy works. So we explode the vessel and do an incision, then we insert the forgotten balloon, and after inflation, we pull back to remove the thrombus. This method has a specific uh, uh, benefit, uh, especially for the chronic uh, organized thrombus. Another choice is a catheter-directed thrombolysis. Uh, this is the least invasive, and we over the wire to advance the multiple side hole uh, infusion catheter. Uh, we were infused, uh, administer some uh, thrombolytic agents such as urokinase or TPA for several hours, continuous drip. Then. Several hours later, we will do the angiography again to check the, is there any residual thrombus. Another uh, mechanical thrombectomy for here, this is uh, angel jet as an example. And over the wire, we advance the catheter, then we inject some uh, thrombolytic engine and wait for several minutes. Then we use the device such as angel jet to remove the uh, aspirate, the acute thrombus. So which kind of uh, uh, method is the best? I think uh, this uh, figure uh, shows the comparison of uh, each method. Uh, as you can imagine, the open thrombectomy and the mechanical thrombectomy, we can remove the thrombus immediately. But the CDT thrombolysis, it takes time to wait. So it depends on your facility and depends on your uh, uh, team experience. Uh, choose the, the better uh, strategy to deal with the problem. And about the thrombo, uh, from, uh, mechanical thrombectomy device such as angel jet, there are several kinds of the angel jet to choose. For example, uh, some, some catheter is specific for DVT and some catheter is for the uh, artery thrombus. 
But about the axis, we call it AVX. Uh, as you can see, the minimal vessel diameter required is a three millimeter. That means if the vessel is, is around one or two millimeter, you, you use the angel jet, probably increase the risk uh, of a vessel injury. And the catheter is a six branch over the uh, 3.5 system, and the total run time is a 600 seconds. So uh, now I want to share some clinical case with you, include the prosthetic graft and the native fistula. So the case one is the left radial sympathetic fistula. As you can see on your left hand side, uh, they are both puncture side have any reasonable change. The excess was totally occluded. So we choose the retrograde approach to remove the thrombus. So after a successful cannulate, uh, we advance the angel jet to remove the venous puncture side from us first. So this picture shows the before and after the thrombectomy. Most of the thrombus was removed completely. Then we move forward to remove the artery puncture site aneurysm. And as you can see, uh, before and after, most of the thrombus was removed. And now we, we, will, we need to find the lesion. For example, in this case, there's a stenotic swing segment. So we do the angioplasty for the swing segment. The case two is the upper arm graft. Uh, we advance the, the angel jet catheter to remove the most of the thrombus. After from back to me, we found that uh, a common uh, ideolo ideology is the stand edge stenosis. So we do an angioplasty on this, this stenotic side, and our right hand side is a completion angiogram. The third case I want to share with you is the central vein occlusion case. And this patient uh, is, a, is allergic to the contrast media. So we use the CO2 uh, to do the angiogram. After successful uh, cannulate through the uh, occluded stenotic uh, left anomia vein, and we do an angiogram, and then we advance the angel jet uh, catheter to remove the thrombus. And then we found that the central vein has a critical stenosis. In the beginning, we, we do the balloon angioplasty to try to open the, the lesion, but the lesion is quite tight and uh, recoil very fast. So we put the stent to to keep the, the stenotic lesion patent. So this is a stenting after balloon and pre dilatation So uh, after share three cases with you, uh, what is, uh, what is the, the tips and tricks to, to use the angel jet in thrombus AV access? Uh, in my opinion, I think uh, the, the history taking is a key point because angel jet uh, get the major benefit uh, to remove the acute thrombus. For example, uh, on your left hand side, the chronic thrombus is quite uh, organized. So uh, the angel jet cannot remove this kind of thrombus uh, uh, very well. Uh, in my practice, I usually do the preoperative sonogram by myself before the intervention. On your right hand side, you can see the, the aneurysm thrombus occluded. There are some organized thrombus scattered on the in, internal wall of the aneurysm. So maybe the organized thrombus uh, cannot remove completely by the angel jet. So this is an example. After we tried several uh, percutaneous endovascular me method, but you can still find some organized thrombus on the puncture side. So we change our uh, strategy to do a mini open embolectomy, and many organized thrombus was removed. So this is a completion angiogram before and after. Another uh, tips and trick I want to share with you is about the uh, distal emboli. Uh, when we use the angel jet to treat uh, the acute uh, artery emboli uh, from us, we used to put the outflow protection filter. But uh, when we, we use the angel jet to remove the from us in the AV axis, we usually don't put the filter in that. But here is the tricks I want to share with you. Uh, after successful cannulation, we will advance our uh, uh, angel jet catheter, remove most of the thrombus burden, and left a small thrombus cape in the downstream. Uh, because the, down, the thrombus cape, can, you can regard it as a, a natural filter. A after remove most of the thrombus burden, and then remove the thrombus cape, I think uh, we can decrease the risk of the distal emboli and decrease the risk of the uh, pulmonary embolism. So 
Uh, after share list of tips and tricks and three cases, uh, what is the evidence in AngelJet to, to treat uh, from both the AB axis? Uh, this is a, a typical the per one and per two registry. Uh, this is a prospective multi-center study uh, enrolled 145 patients, and the male and the female are quite equal, and 66% is a graft and 34% is a fistula. So it looks like a, a real-world study. And about the thrombus uh, uh, characteristic, most of the, the thrombus uh, is less than seven days, and that means it's acute thrombus. Let's check the result. Uh, after angiography, after uh, angio jet from back to me, the angiography result shows uh, quite positive. Uh, as you can see, most, up to 97% uh, patient got uh, significant improved uh, by the angiography result. And when we follow up this patient to three months, we surprisingly found that uh, nearly double the patency as the uh, Kedoki guideline mentioned, 40%. The minimum goal for percutaneous from back to me is 40%. Another uh, question is about, uh, is there any, any complication to use AngioJet to uh, treat the, the thrombus? Yes, uh, the complication is quite minor and uh, rare. So, as the, the figure table you shows, the complication has uh, arrhythmia, bleeding, and dissection of the vessel, and less than 1%. Another evidence I want to share is the systemic review paper. This paper uh, enrolled a study, 10 studies, and you can see the successful rate and the patency rate is quite, quite similar to the uh, per registry. And the real world, the complication rate is quite minor and rare. So from these two evidence, I think AngioJet uh, uh, application in, uh, from both the axis is quite effective and safe. About my uh, summary of my today's talk, uh, I mentioned about the primary system patency. That means almost 50% of the access were occluded within one year. And how to treat the, from both the access uh, to follow up these two principles, uh, to remove the thrombus first and find a lesion and treat it. And I mentioned several kinds of uh, thrombectomy strategy, include the mechanical thrombectomy. And I shared several cases to uh, remove the, the, the thrombus by angel jet. And here are some uh, tips and tricks, especially for the, the acute thrombus is a key point. And the second, uh, I, I mentioned about how to decrease the thrombus the burden and prevent it become a permanent embolism. And from the real world and evidence it suggests that the angel jet has pretty uh, quite effective and safe to perform uh, this use this device to remove the thrombus. So this is my presentation and thanks for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Su, Thank for you. your presentation. And since we've been lagged behind, so let's move on to the next talk. Uh, Dr. Liu Yaodong from China, he's going to share his experience regarding complications associating with thrombosed AVG salvage and how to prevent them. Let's welcome Dr. Liu. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Liu from China, Chongqing. It's my honor to have this presentation in this meeting. First, I will thanks for Jackie's invitation, and I wish this special meeting will be very successful. My topic is complications associating with some burst AV graph savage and how to prevent them. And I will focus on the endovascular therapy to deal with this condition. To save the thrombus, the AV graph, we should to do clear the thrombus and the correcting of the underlying stenosis. Clearance of thrombus include pharmacological thrombolysis surgical sombectomy, sucking sobectomy, and the mechanical sobectomy. And the correction of underlying stenosis include patch angioplasty, bypass jumper graft, PTA, and sometimes lead stem replacement. This is a clinical trial in 2017 
his seven years experience, 149 sonpectomies in 68 grafts. There were seven complications. Six minor included five limited hematomas and one bronchospasm. One major was arterial anastomosis rupture, which required surgical intervention. This is another clinical trials in 2005. The effectiveness and the safety of diagnosis vascular exercise procedures. In this large amount of procedures, the complications is 6.4%. And the minor complications uh, include most of them is grade 1 to 2 hematomas. And the oxygen saturation dropped below 19% during the procedure just turn. Delayed bleeding 9 and reversed the reaction to medication 8. Infection is very rare, just 2. The major complications include grade 3 hematomas 19, peripheral arterial embolism 18, and death during 30 days follow up 2. So the complications of some burst AV graph savage include some pulses relapse, fading arterial embolization, perforation, rupture, pseudoaluresin, hematoma, infection, sympathetic pulmonary embolism. To prevent the some relapse, First, we should decrease the surplus burden as much as possible. Secondly, and it is very important, we should do the efficient dilation of outflow, usually at the various anastomosis site. To prevent the fading artery embolization, we should avoid pressurizing the axis appropriate cloud, clothes, aspiration, and uh, thrombectomy. Choose the minimized wires, balloon, and the casters going past arterial anastomosis. And the balloon must get into arterial before dilation. The embolism can happen in different uh, arterials. In these pictures show us, first we can see here is the ulnar artery and here is the superficial femoral artery thrombosis and here is the bronch and the ulnar artery and the final is the interosal communis artery, it's very clear. To prevent the perforation, rupture, pseudoaluresin, hematoma, we should avoid dilation of fresh anastomotic switch. Be cautious with several stenosis or total of ruin, and be cautious with previous history of rupture, pseudoaluresin, and hematoma. The infection is rare, but what happened is very dangerous. The reason for in infection is uh, bacteria colonization and uh, the puncture for exercise, some nitix infection, or previous diagnosis, surgical infection. To prevent infection, we must pay attention to the strict sterilization before any procedures and be aware of infection before procedure. Pulmonary embolisms to happen or the most of them are asymptomatic. Their cases reported about asymptomatic ones. We can see here 
and here there is a very clear ambrosium. To prevent simple medical pulmonary embolism, we should avoid performing in patients with poor pulmonary or cardiac risk and combine thrombosis adequately decrease thrombus burden. Keep an eye on oxygen situation and the patient's complaint. In our experience, during 2050 to 2019, we have done 246 thrombectomies in 134 graphs. In the complications, the most common is distal atrial embolization. The most serious is rupture, and there is no symptomatic pulmonary embolism. Thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Liu from China. Let's move on to the last speaker, Dr. Soracha Rokapan from Thailand. He's going to talk about efficient service program to salvage thrombosed IVG in Thailand. Let's welcome Dr. Rokapan. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to talk about the efficient service program to salvage the thrombosed IVG in Thailand. This is our hospital in the east coast of southern Thailand. A well-functioning and reliable vascular access is a vital component in the optimal care of hemodialysis-dependent patients with end-state renal disease. All hemodialysis access inevitably uh, fail with time, and restoration of the thrombose hemodialysis access can be achieved with the percutaneous interventional procedure, surgery, or combination of the treatment. Multidisciplinary care and maintenance of hemodialysis access are critical in the achieve optimal patient outcomes. A number of the percutaneous interventions are used in the management of the thrombose AVG, including pharmacological thrombolysis, mechanical thrombectomy, balloon angioplasty, stain or stain graft placement, or we use all the combinations of the treatment. In our hospital, at the emergency room, the patient will be evaluated by the ER specialist and also the nephrologist. Emergency hemodialysis will be performed in the case of the severe electrolyte imbalance or impending heart failure. For the case of non-emergency, all the patients will be treated within 24 to 48 hours, either surgical thrombectomy or endovascular management. Multiple modality for the endovascular treatment for the thrombose EVG. First of all, start with the clot muscillation, thrombolysis, then aspiration thrombectomy, balloon thrombectomy, or we use the mechanical thrombectomy. And then finally, we treat the underlying stenosis with the balloon angioplasty. Due to thrombosis is associated with the underlying venous stenosis is up to 85 to 90% of cases. These are the equipment that we use. We use two of the seven French uh, vascular sheet, 7 mm by 10 cm length high pressure balloon, multi cycle infusion catheters, 5 mg RTPA, and the 7 French guiding catheter for aspiration and for 4 mm Fogarty balloon for balloon, uh, balloon thrombectomy. We start with the graft puncture at the arterial limb and venous limb and cannulate crossing the venous anatomosis or venous stenosis to the draining vein. Venogram is used to identify the point of the stenosis. Central vein was also checked for the associated stenosis. After heparinization about 2,000 units, 
First step, we blew nitroplasty covering the venous mosses for clot mastication. This is the multi hole infusion catheter that we use. The working length can be 10 cm or 20 cm, and there are two markers uh, to identify the length of the working length on the X-ray. After we insert the catheter intrathrombus, half of the mixture of the 5 mg in 20 ml normal saline, we slowly infuse while slowly withdraw the catheter every 30 seconds. After that, we use or uh, advance the seven friend guiding catheters to more distal part near the venous and manual aspiration while withdraw the catheter. We can repeat few times for aspiration. And this is the collected thrombus. After that, we see real balloon dilatations along the venous limb of the graph. And then we repeat the aspiration again at the venous limb. You can see the powerful after we lysis the thrombus and we use the guiding catheter for aspiration. After that, we insert the vascular sheet at the venous limb pointing to the arterial anatomosis and insert the infusion catheter again to the arterial limb side. Infusion the re remaining RTPA along this limb slowly. Then we advance for the balloon beyond the thrombus that we can see by the other side before the brochure. Thrombectomy was done by aspiration of the thrombus via the vascular sheet. And we can repeat this few times until we no longer see the thrombus from the aspiration. We can use the balloon to trap the small or residual or remaining thrombus intragraph. And this is the result at the arterial limb at the venous limb and at the upper arm and at the central vein. For the result, we collect the data for, from 48 thrombos AVG from January 2017 to December 2018. The mean age of the patient is about 68 years old and the median age of the thrombos graph of the creation is about 1.4 years. This is the time and the location of the graph. With this endovascular technique, the technical success is about 90%. Median time to operation is about 1.5 hours. All the patients had the venous anatomosis stenosis. Association with the distal venous draining vein stenosis is about 70% and the central venous stenosis is about 21%. Primary potency at the 1 month, 2 month, 3 month, 6 month and 12 month is about 75%, 66%, 57%, 34% and 24%. And the median time of the primary patency is about 114 days. To compare with the literature from the SAR guideline, our series has better primary patency at the 3 months, however, lower at 6 and 12 months. This table shows no significant difference on the last condition and revascularization of the procedure. If the successful recanalization, we still see the patient with the patency less than 30 days and 60 days, about 42% and 50% respectively. However, in group of the partially recanalization, B 
we found this patient group have more percentage of less patency outcome. This is the uh, major complication and minor complication that we did not find in our study. For the conclusion, in our service, we use multimodality procedure for the treatment of the thrombose AVG to achieve the high technical result. However, with the fair result as 57% primary potency at 3 months, the patient need the repeat intervention resulting in the financial problem to maintain the good potency of the graph. We recently start enrolling uh, using the same graph for the thrombose AVG in the early restenosis at one month period, covering the venous anamosis stenosis and expect to present this result in the near future. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for a very, very uh, impressive uh, uh, presentations. Uh, do you have any uh, comments or questions? Is there any from, questions? From the, yes. Yeah. From uh, the dictator, yes. Uh, I uh, have questions uh, for Dr. Su uh, regarding using the angel jet for the AV uh, access. So uh, we know that um, the angel jet is very efficient to remove the thrombus, uh, but the problem with angel jet is uh, the cost is a bit high in this cohort of patients. So, uh, in your opinion, any specific situation that you think that we should consider angel jet first instead of traditional thrombectomy or thrombolysis? Thank you. Yes. Uh... I think money is always a problem, but uh, we, we, if we don't think about the, the cost, I think angel jet is quite uh, efficient compared to the uh, traditional or uh, currently we use the PMT because uh, we, we in, infuse, inject a less uh, from politic engine. So they probably decrease the risk of uh, spontaneous bleeding. And the second, uh, we can efficiently remove the most of the thrombus, if we use the traditional PMT, probably have more residual thrombus uh, around the, the graft uh, or the occluded area. Yeah. Uh, in my experience, I think the size of the caster is uh, very important. Uh, it depends on the size of the vessel that is occluded. So um, in your experience for the central vein thrombus, so uh, what size of the caster do you think is more appropriate? to remove uh, as much as thrombus as possible. Uh, you you men mentioned the, the central vein diameter? Uh, I mean the diameter. size of the size of the caster, the angel jet caster, to do the central vein uh, from back, back hand equals from back uh, from, from my experience, the, the angel jet for dialysis access has, uh, has only one uh, size. So I, I think, uh, as my, my talk I mentioned, uh, they only mentioned about the, the minimal vessel diameter, uh, at least more than three millimeter. So uh, I think uh, we, we can repeat, uh, aspirate the thrombus in the central vein as much as we can, because uh, this device has 600 uh, uh, runtime. So if we repeat maybe three or four times, we still have some residual thrombus over there. I think that, that should be the organized or um, chronic thrombus. So uh, the angel jet have less benefit on this uh, chronic uh, thrombus. So maybe uh, the next step is to treat the stenotic lesion by stand or, or repeat ballooning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... The reason that I ask this because as we know that the size for the arterial uh, angel jet is different from the vein angel jet. So uh, can we use the, the Zalente to do the central vein as well? Uh, I have this kind of experience, but from previous published study, they used the, 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 the vein from uh, catheter or artery catheter to remove the central vein from us. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
So any question from other panel? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Wen. Yes, I would like to have a question for the Haru, Dr. Harukuji. I'm very, uh, uh, I, I think uh, your way use echo guide to do the PTA is excellent. And I would like to ask, do you have any experience to declut the thrombus using this echo guide and how you do it? Thank you. So the um, I use uh, I use uh, uh, ultrasound for the uh, decloting on the using the uh, ba balloon. So the, uh, the it's a, almost the same way to the uh, balloon plasty on the on the we can see the clot directly uh, and using the ultrasound. So the, if that there are Residual um, clot in the in the in the vein. Uh, I um, I do the second, third, and uh, if the all, almost all clot is the clot, uh, so that it it is a very useful. I think that uh, the other sound is easier than uh, using a fluoroscopy because uh, we can see the clot directly in the vein. So the, sometimes I use uh, um, the, uh, uh, it's a good way, I think. Okay, thank you. So you use uh, thrombolysis, use like urokinase or TPA? Yeah. Or you use double lumen Fogarty? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we use a Fogarty the, uh, the first, in the first place, but there's sometimes I use, I, in Japan we use uh, 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 not, not the TPA. Okay. So the, before the, uh, the using, uh, uh, the PTA, we use, uh, uh, and uh, about the three hours before, before the PTA. So the, and the way you wait the, the leases of the clot. So the, if the almost all clot releases that the, we do only the PTA, but if, if the, there are a uh, uh, lot of the residual um, clots, so the, we use the so-called uh, aspiration using the, uh, the seas. So the, if the almost all clot is aspirated, the, then I, I do the uh, balangue plastic. So okay, they did good for the, not only the uh, decoding, but also the, um, the thesis and the uh, aspiration using the other, and the other sonography. Great, thank you. Here's some of the experience from uh, one of the panel, Dr. Ye Hong. I think Dr. Ye is also using the ultrasound guided uh, intervention. Dr. Ye, could you please share some experience for uh, do you use the ultrasound guided uh, method to treat the thrombus AV axis as well? Dr. Ye, please. Uh, I have a question. Want to uh, ask Dr. Chen? Uh, uh, some cases reported the, the thrombus the AVG, which has been blocked uh, for a long time. Uh, can be uh, salvaged successfully, but in fact, uh, uh, the chronic uh, thrombus in the arterial uh, anastomosis uh, are very hard, and uh, the guide wire is difficult to uh, to pass because there is an angle, and uh, the uh, Fugati alone. Uh, a catheter is also difficult to uh, pass. Uh, what measures will be take? Uh, the, the, this question to which doctor? Uh, I think the question is for you, Doctor Chen. Me? Yes. Okay. Uh, you mean? Yes. You mean if you if you have some problem with uh, chronic occluded AV axis, how would you pass the wire? No, no, no. Is it a question? 
I think Dr. Chen would like to ask about uh, whether how to pass the arterial anastomosis if there's a distal emboli, because the angle and the occlusion was blocked where exactly the wire was passing. So he would like to know if there's any tricks and tips for uh, interventionists to pass it. Uh, you and mean the thrombus in the artery? Distal emboli. For example, if the oh, embolus okay. is dislodged into a brachial artery, and then uh, it's difficult to pass. Any tricks? Every time, uh, every time when we do the thrombac, uh, the percutaneous uh, thrombectomy, we always check for any distal emboli. And if you have any distal emboli, you can just use a four French supporting caster and. Um, <laughs> always that I think it's not very difficult to pass uh, the um, occluded segment and some because the, if the patient present not very late actually the thrombus is not very difficult to pass so uh, you can just use a um, we, we use a, a, a two lumen for guardian caster so when we pass the wire across the occluded segment we just use a two lumen for guardian caster to remove the thrombus to just pull back the thrombus back to the uh, axis, and then the blood flow will bring the thrombus away from the axis. Uh, this is my personal experience. I don't know any panel have the uh, other experience to treat with the distal emboli at the arterial part of the AV axis. Yes. Is there any other experience regarding distal emboli? Is there any tricks that we'd like to share with the audience and the panel? Uh, Dr. Miyaki, do you have any special tricks for us? We have the, the thrombus in the artery. Uh, it's better to uh, it's better to uh, proceed the guide wire into the artery, and then uh, and uh, we can do the same procedure as we do in an every fistula, which means um, using uh, using uh, uh, urokinase or TPA, and uh, and then after we can uh, break break uh, the, the uh, soft softened uh, thrombus by the PTA balloon. That's that's what we are doing here in the Kumamoto in Japan. Yes? Oh, thank, thank you, Dr. Miyaka. Is there any other questions regarding uh, the talks? I think Dr. Suracha Rokopan has a question, right? Could you please raise your question? Dr. Rokopan, please. Uh, I, I, I want to share about the distal embolizations. Uh, I have one patient uh, doing the Focati balloon from back to me and then the the balloon was ruptured and small piece of the the balloon was flowing down to the distal radial artery i did the small puncture with the four french sheet at the brachial artery and then used the small four french uh diagnostic catheter to to aspirate so i think this this technique can can use well with the thrombus okay thank you dr rakapan uh, I, think, I think Dr. Wen I, has questions. Dr. Wen just raised his hand. Okay. Thank you. I would like to ask all the panelists. Um, we use endovascular thrombectomy, use double sheets, right? And um, I would like to ask your opinion. Which part you will do the first? The venous part first or arterial for part first? Because regarding to the distal artery emboli, regarding to the primary emboli and sometimes regarding that you cannot remove the thrombus easily during the sheath area. So I, I would like to ask all the panelists, do you have any experience or any any suggestion? I thought that uh, much panelists maybe use venous uh, do the venous first right? Uh, actually uh, actually I'm doing the arterial first because uh, using the double facing sheets, we will uh, first uh, try to remove the thrombus from the arterial graft junction. So when the arterial graft junction thrombus was removed, the flow will be maintained in the axis. So 
after we just do the angioplasty for the outflow tract uh, lesion, then uh, the access can get very quick uh, reflow. So it will make the procedure very fast. So every procedure that we do with the arterial venous graft using the percutaneous thrombectomy, we sometimes only need less than 10 minutes to finish the whole procedure. So it's very efficient. So uh, one problem you mentioned about the clot over the sheets, I think that's uh, not a problem. You can always try to leave the wire inside the uh, sheets and then remove the sheets when you do the thrombectomy. So the sheets will not bother with your thrombectomy. So this is uh, one of the tricks that I use to fully remove the thrombus as much as, as possible. So I don't know other panel have any other experience. Uh, yes. What about uh, yeah? yeah. Um, uh, I'm I'm doing it in the uh, opposite way to to the <laughs> Dr. Jimmy. I'm, I mean uh, I opened the, the, the uh, venous anastomosis side, and then after uh, I, I I released the uh, arterial anastomosis side. And uh, before, before uh, putting a PTA balloon on an uh, artery side, I try to remove uh, as much as uh, as much uh, uh, thrombus as much as possible. But uh, there is, uh, I think, there is not so much big difference in, uh, in a result. I mean, uh, if we if we do a centigram pulmonary artery centigram. Uh, we can we can find almost 100 almost 100 percent small asymptomatic uh, thrombosis pulmonary simple emboli, and uh, so that what we need to be careful is not to not to uh, make a, a, a symptomatic pulmonary embolism. I actually experienced three uh, cases of the pulmonary and. A thrombosis after this procedure. They are not severe cases, fortunately, but uh, uh, there could be a uh, 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 chance to, to make that kind of a situation. Thank you. Dr. Liu, Dr. Liu Yangdong, how's your uh, maneuver to treat uh, this occluded AVG? You remove the arterial side first or the uh, Ven, ven ciphers. I will deal with the, uh, the venous anastomosis first. So uh, we know that the fresh embolism uh, uh, can remove uh, easy, but uh, uh, the embolism cap located in the uh, arterial, uh, arterial anastomosis is uh, very difficult to remove. So. Uh, I have a question for Jimmy. Yes. Can you give some? Can you give us uh, give us some suggestion to yes. remove the uh, embolism cap located in this area? Uh, you mean uh, which area? Uh, the arterial arterial thrombosis side. Oh, you mean how to remove the thrombus yeah. over the yes. part? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, can. Actually, it's very it, difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it's sometimes it's very difficult. So uh, in our maneuver, we try to use uh, the dual lumen Fogati uh, several times. And we, we uh, always try to check and make sure that it's fully removed. Because if not partially removed, sometimes it might uh, have um, a shorter patency. So um, currently, I think we don't really have much problem with that part. So uh, I suggest that you can use a bigger balloon over the part because for us, uh, we don't downsize the balloon that is used to do the PTA over the arterial side. For us, um, we sometimes use up to seven millimeter balloon over the part if we find that there's something, uh, something sticky over the aggregate junction. And we haven't experienced any rupture of this part of the vessel. Uh, very, I think less than 1% chance to really break the part. So it's not really uh, um, dangerous to do that. 
if you really want to click up all the thrombus over the arterial grab junction. Thank you so much. Okay, sorry. I think I think we have uh, we are uh, we are a bit uh, uh, out of time for this section. So I think uh, can we have you know the final final uh, final word from, uh, from uh, Dr. Akira Miyata for to end this session. Yes. Mute. So, uh, everybody, I thank you very much for, for a long day and then a good, good and a big discussion for today. And uh, now uh, we are going to start faculty dinner. <laughs> now, now, okay. Uh, today is Saturday, so uh, let's enjoy and uh, let's go out to the downtown and uh, take some drinks. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Let's enjoy ourselves. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's the end of today's meeting. Thank you for your participation. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.